Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some of the things the top designers in the world right now are loving, things that they're incorporating to all of their designs and you should be aware of and consider for your home. We've got some things to talk about, so let's get into the video. The first thing we have to talk about that the most world-renowned interior designers are loving right now is actually quartzite. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the marble trend that has been like, taking over the world and the planet. We all love it, great, wonderful, whatever. Quartzite is somewhere in the middle between marble and granite. It's a natural stone, a material that comes from the earth and it has natural variation to it. And it's softer, it is more porous, and it can get scratched, but not quite as easily as marble. And it's definitely not as durable as granite. So it's got some of the qualities you might really love about marble and the veining and the colors of it, but it's also somewhat more durable. So a lot of designers are really liking this right now. Now, what's my opinion of it? I like a good old classic marble. I'm not gonna go for quartzite just because it doesn't really mesh with my style perfectly in my opinion. Plus quartzite hasn't expanded quite as far into the tile realm just yet. So if you really like marble countertops and marble backsplashes, you could actually do a marble countertop and a tile backsplash in marble that could be done a little bit more affordably. As where quartzite, you may not have the same tile variance as the countertops that don't match quite as perfectly. So it's a a little bit of an untapped area. Unless you're doing a slab backsplash, then I think it can be wonderful. The next thing interior designers are loving right now that I am seeing everywhere by some of the top people in the industry is oil rub bronze. We really like this. We love all sorts of hardware and you know I believe in mixing them. So I'm like a chrome, a brass person and oil rub bronze is really wonderful because it's somewhere in between like an unlacquered brass and a polished brass because it has that age quality to it that unlacquered brass gets, but you don't have the issues surrounding that. And this is really where this is coming from because we love unlacquered brass and we like the way it patinas if you're prepared to take care of it, which I always share with you. I'm not personally, so I go for a polished brass and that's okay. But an oil rub bronze has that really deep, rich color and effect that unlacquered brass gets over time. We fell out of love with it a little bit because of the whole like Mediterranean Spanish design and style where we just saw some really not great oil rub bronze, but it's definitely something worth considering if you don't like chrome, you don't like brass, and you don't want the maintenance of any of that stuff, you don't care for it so much, oil rub bronze is fantastic, and some of the most renowned designers are using it, especially in spaces that have a lot of architecture or are very minimal. What's my opinion of it? I like it, I think it's great. I like brass and chrome mixed together more. I like that harsher, more glamorous contrast, and I think that's really wonderful for my home, but oil rub bronze is, oil rub bronze is not something I'm opposed to. We've done it before. It's not that big of a deal and we actually really like it. So it has that subtle effect that can be really beneficial to a lot of different spaces. The next thing some of the top interior designers in the business, in the industry are loving are agnostic tiles. I'm talking about the glazed handmade looking tiles. What do these tiles look like? What are they all about? They have natural variation in them and there's not like a super smooth smooth glaze on them. So you get a lot of interest and play in the sheen on them, which I think is really great. It has some of those natural variations in it that reflect back to natural stone. That's actually why this is so popular because it's an alternative to this that gets you some of that character stone has, but you don't have the maintenance associated with stone. So these are really wonderful. People are very much liking them right now. And we're starting to see them come out in a lot of interesting colors, but they have a certain soft to them. They're not like really vibrant tiles. You know, you can get really soft blue or pink. We're seeing a lot of greens right now. That's pretty. There's some black versions out there that are really gorgeous. So be on the lookout for all of those. What's my opinion of it? It is the new subway tile. We love subway tile. It's a classic and we definitely saw so much of it being done with that like farmhouse kind of style that we got a little bit tired of it and we're kind of trying to move past it a little bit. This is the new thing. We're seeing it everywhere. I see it all over social media literally flooding my feeds. I think it looks good. I think it's very pretty. I wouldn't do it in my home just because I 
don't think the maintenance of natural stone is that difficult for me personally, so I would much rather have that. But I also think it's really great for those of you that want that natural stone look or the variations in it, but don't want the maintenance of it. Sometimes this can be a little bit cheaper if it's one of those mass produce options as opposed to a handmade option, so you can save some money instead of doing a natural stone, which I think is great. And it's also a good alternative to a subway tile if you're just not into that. Oh, one of the things interior designers love so much that every interior designer is like, we have to have, it's essential, a key element in any design is a runner. We love runners, especially vintage runners, because they have a multitude of colors in them, they have variation in them, and they can be used in places where we really don't bring a lot of furniture into the space. For example, take a small hallway. You have a lot of doors, you have walkways, you don't wanna block off by bringing furniture into the space. And if you have a lot of those doors, you don't have a ton of place for artwork in the space. You can pick a bold color, but there's not a lot happening in that area. Bring in a runner, something fun, something interesting that has color, that connects it to the rest of the spaces in the home, and boom, all of a sudden it's done taking care of, and I love that. Runners are essential, and they're also really great in kitchens. You can bring some of what's happening in the other spaces into the kitchen to create a little bit of the flow with the color schemes you have happening, and I think that's wonderful. As a matter of fact, that's like a really great design secret, right? To bring colors from the spaces in through a runner. I think that needs to be our next video and definitely will be. So we're gonna, what, what should it be? Secrets interior designers are not telling you. Oh, we love that for us. Definitely it's coming next. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel. You've joined the Le Chic family so you don't miss out on that video or any of the other amazing content we have coming out. Hitting that subscribe button and the like button are so important to helping a channel grow and we definitely appreciate it. But runners are so amazing in a space. We absolutely love them. And it's really wonderful in a kitchen space, for example, because you can put something like a pad that will definitely help out your back and alleviate some of the stress of standing in a kitchen under a beautiful vintage runner and then you don't have to look at that. You can use runners in bathrooms, you can use them in hallways. They're really fantastic. Also designers are really loving to use runners on staircases right now. You want to be careful about that and make sure you have it installed really well so that you don't have any sort of safety hazard but it's a great way to bring some of what's happening in the rest of the space into a smaller area that you really can't bring a lot of furniture or artwork or anything to tie it into the rest of the home into. We have to talk about floors and the one thing every designer loves that we love to see in a home and so many people uh, just adore are herringbone floors. We love them, we know, like Garrett, why are you even bringing this up? We all love it, of course, but there's a way that top designers like to use herringbone floors that you might not know about. Many people look at them and they're like, yes, we have to have it lay it everywhere throughout the house. But when you run herringbone like from a bedroom into a hallway, into another bedroom, into another bedroom, it can actually look a little bit odd because sometimes the direction of the floor needs to change. Like in that hallway, you might have a weird transition point of the herringbone is facing the wrong direction or it goes into that bedroom and it's the wrong way. You don't wanna end up with something like that. So what a lot of designers like to do is either add a border on that floor and that herringbone or do like a threshold at the door so they can change direction of the floors. Or maybe you don't use herringbone everywhere. You only use it in the hallway or you only use it in the main rooms and then you opt for a matching floor that runs in a more typical straight lined kind of direction. All of that's really fantastic. I love herringbone floors and I think they're so amazing but in my opinion they're best left to be used as a feature in one or two rooms or you can use them in every room but just make sure they're divided up and you have a little bit of a break in them so it doesn't feel unnatural. Sometimes you see these used and they're like in a weird direction in this one place because it probably should have stopped in one room and just transitioned to a normal type of floor especially because herringbone is a very large investment and it can be very expensive expensive to have installed. So save the money from having herringbone put in the closet and just have some normal floors run in there and you're good to go. I love herringbone floors, but just make sure you're not overdoing it. You leave it as a feature and something a little more subtle in the space. Let's talk about sconces and lighting because, oh, 2023, the year of the lamp. You know I've said it a million and one times and I will continue until it's no longer 2023, but I'll still be using my lamps. We love layered lighting, right? Every designer does and the top designers in the industry industry love sconces and picture lights. Sconces and picture lights are great because one, 
they're on switches or they're on outlets and they're not taking up table space. You don't have to have something there to set a lamp on. They also serve as indirect lighting often and so you don't have the harsh glare that you would from an overhead light. As a matter of fact, in most spaces, we don't really use the overhead light. We much prefer lamps. But I love a sconce because you can definitely use them to create a little bit of scale. You can make an installation or like an artwork over a table look so much more grand by having sconces on either side. You can also just add an interesting layer to an empty space in a corner or on a wall through a sconce. I think all of that is really fantastic. We love sconces. They can, however, be difficult to install after the fact, especially if you don't have attic access above that space. So be mindful of that and maybe you opt for one that has some cords and a little bit of a cable management system. You can also get wired in sconces and just not have them wired in and use a little puck light hack to get that light on a remote control. Look for rechargeable ones so you're not constantly throwing out batteries, that's a great way to get the sconce look without having cords running down your wall, without having to wire anything in, and without them actually being a permanent fixture in the space. Designers also love picture lights, once again, because it's another layer of lighting and it's indirect. It provides that glowing, moody atmosphere we all love, and you can highlight some of your artwork. Once again, this is basically just a sconce, really, and it can be wired in, you can have it run on a cable or a cord to an outlet, and turn it on and off yourself. You can affix it to the back of paintings or there's ones that go on a wall. As a matter of fact, you can actually find a ton of sconces and picture lights and a lot of those puck light hacks, cable management systems linked in my Amazon storefront. So be sure you check that out in the description box down below. Interior designers, right now, the top people in the industry are absolutely loving sofas with low backs on them. That may not work for everyone and that's okay. If you like your recliner, that's great. Definitely have it if you have an antique Victorian sofa with a high back, I say go for it. But a lot of designers right now are liking to use things with lower backs because they make a space feel more open, they can make your ceilings feel taller and allow more light to transfer through the space. I think that's really wonderful. As a matter of fact, I just got a new sofa with a lower back because as you can see, I'm not lounging and reclining on my sofa. I definitely sit on them and I sit upright, so I don't need to have something that allows me to lounge and lay all the way back in it. If that is the position you're in, definitely stick with it and go for that. As a matter of if you like recliners and the, the kind of opposition a lot of designers have to them is because the back of them is so tall and they feel like such a large scale piece in a space. So if you are looking for a new recliner or a new reclining sofa option, look for something that has a slightly lower back to it that maybe has a headrest that expands out of it. That can definitely lead a space to feeling a little bit more elevated than having a bulkier recliner in the space, but you definitely want to focus on the comfort of the space and the usability for you. But back to my new sofa, I actually just got it in. It arrived four months early and I'm so excited about it. We're all loving it and eating it up. And one of the best things I've noticed about it is actually that the back is low enough. I can use it as an armrest. I can lounge on it. I can spread out and stretch out and relax on it. I just absolutely love this sofa. And of course I had to have it upholstered in a custom Wedgwood blue. Such a fantastic piece that I absolutely love. And of course Linus loves it too. Not that he's going to be on it all the time because little white dog and custom blue sofa don't always mix perfectly together. The next thing interior designers are loving right now is actually this flush mounted light fixture. And it's a little difficult to explain without you seeing the photos. So I'm going to put one up here and you can see it kind of looks a little bit like a soup can on the ceiling. It's got just kind of like a cylinder there, right? So we really loved flush mounted fixtures or recessed fixtures for a long time. It started with those kind of eyeball looking fixtures that you could rotate and point at things, which was great, but also they looked a little bit bulky. So then we moved on to the recessed cam lights, which we did like, and the light bulb was kind of completely recessed into the ceiling. Then we started with the LED fixtures that were flush to the ceiling. There wasn't some big bulky hole in the ceiling or a shadow casted. These are really great because a lot of them are color temperature adjustable, which I think is really wonderful. My opinion on it is that they're nice, they're okay. You know what, no. Let me stop being nice and start being honest. It looks kind of like a soup can to me. It looks like a udder on a cow. Like, I don't know, it looks a little bit funny. I personally would not bring it into my space because I'd be walking around looking at it and being like, 
I don't know, I'd be looking at it. I have seen them that I really do like when they're installed in large amounts of them, like all together lined up over like an island in a kitchen, I think can actually be very impactful. But then, you know, you're looking at it and there'll be like 30 of them all together and they're actually quite expensive, these fixtures. So you definitely wanna be mindful of that. Also having like 30 lights wired in all in the same space seems like a lot of electricity in one area to me. And you all know if you have like too many lights on in a space, like you have the TV on and all the lamps and the overhead light and you plug the vacuum in, like you trip the breaker. It seems like that would be the situation here in my opinion. So definitely be on the lookout for this. If you like it, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of these? Because I wanna know your opinion. Well, there you have it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure you sound off and let me know in the comment section down below. And if you didn't like this video, you probably didn't make it this far anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I wanna hear from you, so share with me I also want to know what is one thing you notice a ton of designers are doing that you either really like or you don't like. We need to know. Sound off down below. Give this video a like and be sure you've hit that subscribe button. I also know that you know someone that they are embarking on a renovation, a makeover. They're decorating and designing their home. Maybe they're building new and some of these tips would help them. Be sure you share this video with them because friends help friends. And I will see you in the next one.